Ajan Lombi de Bujo, Kamakana Dakto, Sanki, the night to Peter Lokamalaya Dakso, Vishnu Baro, Dwija Baro, Yuga Dharma Palo, Hande Jiga Priyakaro, Kuruna Avataro, Hande Shi Krishna Chaitanya, Nityanando, Sanodi Dario, Daya Pushpan Mantu, Sita Sando Tamo Mudra. Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are compared to the, the sun and the moon. And as the verse goes, that sun and the moon is like two bright lights in this dark age of Kali. And they've risen over the horizon of Goya to dissipate the darkness of this material existence, especially in this age of Kali. These two brothers, Rajendra Nanda Nege, Sachi Sutta, Poilo Se, Balaram Poilo Nitai. So that say these two brothers, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, are actually Lord Balaram and Lord Krishna come again in more magnanimous and more merciful forms to give Krishna Prema Soma to easily and everyone simply by this process of putting out on Sankirtan. So when Lord Chaitanya, when Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram were here, they simply killed the demons and they gave their association to their devotees. But Lord Chaitanya doesn't make any distinction between demons and non-devotees. He simply, or devotees, he's simply giving his mercy to anyone and everyone. So in this age, he's trying to kill not the demons, but to kill their mentality of by giving them the light of the holy name of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare So sometimes you may ask, well, what is the benefit of chanting Hare Krishna? Is it just more than a nice singing and dancing? It is actually the highest form of worship that one can undergo. These names of the Lord, Hare Krishna and Rama, are coming from the spiritual world itself. And they're coming into the hearts of the pure devotees of the Lord who distribute, distribute that mercy to everywhere and anywhere. Simply by their mercy and simply by chanting the holy names of the Lord, we can attain perfection in life. And perfection means we develop our love for Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was here, he didn't uh, write. In fact, he only wrote one set of verses, which is called Shik Shastikam, which means Shiksha means instructions, Astikam means eight. He gave eight verses on the glories of the chanting of the Holy Name and the process of pure devotional service. Those eight verses were studied and then expanded upon by the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, Sri Rupa Sanatha, Bhakti Ravanaj, Siddhi Mahopalva, and Dasrakana into all of their literatures describing the process of pure devotional service. As Srila Prabhupada mentions that, all of those eight verses were simply the expressions of the Goswamis' realizations on pure devotional service. So you, you can understand how powerful these eight verses are. In fact, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, along with Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, has given commentary on these eight verses in quite detail to help us go deeper into the meanings. And each of those verses is a couplet of the holy name. The first verse is Hare Krishna. The second verse is Hare Krishna. The third verse is Krishna Krishna. The fourth verse is Hare Hare. The fifth verse is Hare Rama. The sixth verse is Hare Rama. The seventh verse is Rama Rama. The eighth verse is Hare Hare. This is Shiva Bhakti Vinod Thakur. This is actually Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's realization on these eight verses. These eight verses also comprise the entire process of pure emotional service. Adhyastrada, faith, Sarvasanga, association with devotees, Vajra Kriya, taking shelter of the spiritual master and working under his guidance, 
an art and degree by working under the spiritual master's guidance. We remove all the block blocks and an art is an art to these unwanted things in our devotional life, which opens up the path to pure devotional service. When 75% of our anarthas are removed, then we come to the platform of Mishnah. And Mishnah means fixed in devotional service. We're not going to be deviated. Although we're not pure yet, still we're fixed in devotion. From that stage, when that matures, Vishnu comes to Ruchi. Ruchi means a sweet taste. Prasanna Manda Shoshiti Nakongshiti Samasa Veshibhute Shimad Bhakti Bhagate Prana. One does not hanker, one does not lament, one is feeling the happiness of Krishna consciousness constantly. And that is the stage of Ruchi, and then from Ruchi comes Ashyati, that means affectionate attachment to Krishna in a preliminary stage. And then when that matures, it comes to Baba, that means supreme affection for Krishna. One is absorbed in Krishna and offering their love to Krishna. When that love matures, it comes to the final stage of Prema. Prema, there are state, eight stages of loving God all the way up to Mahabhava, which is the, the mood of Srimati Radharani and um, who is the other person? Madhavendra Puri. These two only have that stage. It's the highest stage of love of God. So these are eight verses. The first verse is Adhanastrata. The second verse is Anarthi Nibriti. The third verse is Bajanat uh, Kriya. Kriya. The fourth verse is, uh, well, the second verse is Sabasana. The third verse is Bajanat uh, Kriya. The fourth <coughs> verse is uh, Anarthi Nibriti. No. The third verse is Anartha The fourth verse. No, the fourth verse is. Actually, the first verse is. Adal Shrava Sadhu Sangha Vajana Kriya. That's the first verse. The second verse is Anartha Nibriti. The third verse is Nishta. The fourth verse is Ruchi. The fifth verse is Ashakti. The sixth verse is Ashakti with Abhava. The seventh verse is love of God in separation. And the eighth verse is love of God in meeting Krishna. These are the eight verses. So the whole process of bhakti is in those eight verses. They also comprise the uh, three stages, of the three kinds of bhakti, sadhana bhakti, uh, bhava bhakti, and Prima Bhakti are in those eight verses consecutively. So in those eight verses, Lord Chaitanya's expression of his love for Krishna and the Guru Srimati Radharani, the entire process of Bhakti is there. The first verse is interesting because in the first verse, the seven benedictions that the Holy Name gives to the chapter is mentioned one after another. Um, Chaito Darpanam Marjanam, Baba Maha Nirva Nirva Pranam, Shreya Kaiva Vichendrika Vikaranam, Vidyala Vijivanam, Ananda Bhuri Vardanam, Patipurdam Bhunam Vitaswaranam, Sarvapa Snapanam Param, Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. So in that first verse, the seven verses. And it's interesting to when you catch those seven things, you'll see the suffix of each of those ends with nam. Chaito Dharma Marjanam, Baba Mahadeva Nirva Pranam, Sreya Kaiva Vichendrika Vitaranam, Vidyavadhu Jivanam, Anandamuri Vardanam. Only, only God could do that. Only God could do that. He, 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 can, he connects the suffix now with each of the benedictions. Pretty amazing. Okay, Chaito Darpan Marjan. What does that mean? Chaito means mind. Darpan means to clean. 
and uh, Marjana means to clean, Dharma means mirror. To cleanse the mirror of the mind. The mind is like a mirror. It reflects what's inside, outside. Everyone sees the world through their own lens. There is an objective reality that everyone sees according to their subjective understanding or their conditioning. So that mind is, is covered with what is called dust and material contamination. So by chanting the holy names of the Lord, gradually we remove the dust that covers the mirror of the mind and then the reflecting power of the mirror actually becomes exposed and then what is reflected inside is also reflected outside. Or what is reflected outside becomes in. Therefore, as Krishna says, when you thus learn the truth, you'll know that all living beings are like parts and parcels that are in me in their mind. That is reality. When you see everything in Krishna and everyone in Krishna, then you're seeing. You're seeing clearly. You're seeing according to your to what is called spiritual vision. And so that chanting helps you come to that stage of purifying the mind. The second one, Baba Mahadeva Nidhya means the material energy is very, very difficult to overcome. There are miseries in the material energy. Adi Bautika, Adi Daivika, and Adi Ahabuka. Aliyatmaka means the mysteries that come with our body and mind. We all know that, right? The body gives us trouble, the mind is always giving us trouble. <laughs> so these, this is called klesha, or under our miseries. And then there's miseries by other living entities. You know, government, taxes, <laughs> you take all your salary. <laughs> If they don't get it all in one shot, then they raise the prices to make sure they get it all out of action. <laughs> so the, then you also mosquitoes, they give you misery. You don't, you, you don't even bother the mosquitoes, but they bother you. And then there's relatives, too. So <laughs> there's, there's so many miseries coming from other living entities. It's constant barking dogs. You're going to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go back to sleep. I don't want to watch television. <laughs> There's a big dog out there. <laughs> 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 simply given us by the demigods, the higher powers. So these three classes are always there in the material world. If you chant the holy name, we can actually free ourselves from the effects of these things. Not all at once, but we can lessen it. We lessen it, lessen it, lessen it, lessen it, until it eventually becomes God. As you make advancement in devotional service, you reduce these miseries of all of these three categories. And that's part of the mercy of the Holy Name. And then the next one, Shreya Kaiva Vachendrika Vachendrika. This is so beautiful really, when you think about this one. Shreya means auspicious. And Kaiva is a lotus flower. It's a special kind of lotus flower that is unlike any other lotus. Most lotuses bloom under the rays of the sun, but this lotus blooms under the rays of the moon. So it's a compare that the moon rays are like cooling rays that give relief from the scorching heat of the material energy. And so when we chant the holy names of the Lord, we actually find 
uh, and the heart starts to open up and the cooling rays of the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra comes onto the lotus of one's heart and the lotus starts to open. So what does that mean? Your good fortune is there. Everyone has good fortune. Some of us are tasting it and some of us will get it soon. Or some of us have had it. Everyone has had good, has a chance to get their good fortune. And so it becomes easily available through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. It opens up your good fortune. Shreya Kaivari Chandra Karavita. Chandra means the moon. Vidya Vidu Jiva. Now this is really quite nice. Vidya means knowledge and Jivana means life. So the chanting of the holy name gives life to transcendental knowledge as a bridegroom gives life to the bride on the wedding day. <laughs> this is the analogy used by the Acharyas. As the bride, as the bride, the bride feels very happy in the presence of the bridegroom on the wedding day, then in the same way, transcendental knowledge becomes awakened when we chant the holy names. Just like you see many spiritual groups, they just discuss philosophy. And this is dry. Nobody knows what they're talking about anyway. <laughs> and they don't know what they're talking about. Just like with Prabhupada was in one Pandal program, I think it was in, in Kurukshetra. And all of these yogis and sadhus and coming, they were all speaking, they were all speaking all kinds of nonsense. And Prabhupada was listening, he was the last speaker. And Prabhupada was making all kinds of faces, listen to him, and he was, these guys are just, they don't know what they're talking about. And then the audience was, audience was falling asleep most of the <laughs> There was about 2,000 people there. And so when it was Prabhupada's turn to, to speak, he just called the devotees on stage, they had kirtan. And everybody got up and started to chant, to chant and dance, and everybody forgot about these other sadhus, and everybody was having a good time with kirtan. <laughs> so the transcendental knowledge actually becomes alive in the presence of Krishna's holy name. So if we want to learn more about the books, we need to also give <coughs> sufficient time, quality time to our chanting the holy name. Then, that, then the knowledge becomes easily understandable and easily apply, applicable also when we give time for chanting the holy name. And the fourth one is an andam buddhi vardhanam. An andam means bliss or happiness. Vardhanam means ocean and buddhi means deep. There's a deep ocean of, of spiritual happiness that comes from chanting Hare Krishna. The jiva, us, we are small, we are tiny. The word jiva means tiny. But we can have unlimited happiness in connection with the unlimited source of happiness. So there's something about the jiva that's unlimited and that's our happiness. Everything else is limited. <laughs> But our, our, not, our, our happiness can be unlimited when we connect with Krishna in the form of the holy name. And then the analogy is given that Radharani is there and Krishna is there. Radharani, Krishna looks at Radharani, sees how beautiful she is, he becomes happy. And then when he becomes happy, he becomes more beautiful. And then Radharani looks at Krishna and she sees that he's become more beautiful, therefore she becomes more happy and she becomes more beautiful. And Krishna looks back at Radharani and she becomes even more beautiful, he becomes more happy and he becomes more beautiful. And Radharani looks at Krishna and says, oh wow, he's become even more beautiful, she becomes more happy and then she becomes more beautiful. And it goes on. You can try that with your wife. <laughs> But it only works like once or twice, maybe. I don't think it could be as <laughs> unlimited as, you know, Radha and Krishna's mood. <laughs> maybe some of you can do it. <laughs> but anyway, the point is that when you become happy, you become beautiful. When you're, uh, <laughs> even if you're good looking, you're, uh, <laughs> you know, just get, 
to take them out and give me some for sure. <laughs> Yeah, there's an unlimited ocean, and this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Unlimited ocean of happiness that comes by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu. Any happiness that we have experienced in chanting is just a small drop of the unlimited ocean of happiness available in chanting the Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu. And the next one is Pratipurdhamparami Kaswaminam. And that means at every step, this is an interesting one. There's newer and newer realizations of our relationship with Krishna. Each of us has an eternal relationship with Krishna in the spiritual world. Each of us has a spiritual form. And through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, gradually we can help reveal that spiritual form and taste our relationship with Krishna in one of the five masses. And even Shantanas to some degree. So this particular one, every step, it gets better and better as we chant Hare Krishna. And the last one, Sarvatma Snapada. That means Sarvatma means all. And Snapada means bad. In other words, your home, your possessions, everything in connection with you becomes spiritualized by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu. In other words, your life becomes a spiritual entity in and of itself. Not just you, but everything in connection with you also becomes spiritualized. So these are the seven benedictions that Lord Chaitanya has given us in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu. And of course, if you study those seven benedictions, you'll find that everything is there. Knowledge, happiness, unlimited, uh, and, and uh, awakening our relationship with Krishna, pushing back the fires of material existence. It's all there in chanting the Hare Krishna. And that's the power, because uh, Kali Kale, Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar. So Krishna has invented in this age as his name. So sometimes people say, well, Krishna hasn't come in this age. He has. He actually has come in two forms. In three times he's come in this age. He's come as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's come as Lord Jagannath. And he's also come as um, the Holy Name. And out of the three, Lord, the Holy Name is the most merciful. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gauru He is the most magnanimous incarnation. Why? Because he's making the process of pure devotional service readily available to anyone and anyone. The qualification is your own desire. That's all. If you have that desire, then you are qualified to receive the mercy of the Lord. It doesn't matter who you are, what is your background, what is your, where you're coming from, what is your qualifications or disqualifications. These things are not counted. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has removed that. I mean, when, when Krishna was here, it wasn't so easy. He made conditions. He said, Sarvakana, Brahekshita, Mamekha. You have to surrender to me first, and then you get the mercy. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't say that. He didn't say any last night. He said, just chant, ask, and take Prashant. <laughs> so he's made the process so easy and so readily available that we see even the children, they're jumping up and down and they're singing. They're worshiping the Lord perfectly. Although maybe they feel it's just some entertainment still. They're getting the benediction, the benefit of worshiping the Lord. That's the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this, this name is just like this one verse. Nava Chintamani Krishnas Chaitanya Rasa Vigra Purnya Sudya Nitya Mukta Abhinna Tvam Nami Nami No 
Abhinna, Bhinna means different, and Abhinna means non-different, the same. So what is the same Nami and Nama? Or he who is named and the name. He who is named and the name are Abhinna, Nama are different. But there's a difference. There is a difference. And that's explained that the name is more merciful than he who is named. Although they're the same. <laughs> Although they're the same, then if you approach Krishna, you may not get the mercy you need, but if you approach Krishna through the holy name, it becomes more easily available. So that's how merciful the name is. So in this age, Krishna has shown his mercy completely in the sound of his name. Nam Nam Akari Bahudai Nija Sarva Shakti Nija Sarva Shakti means all the power, all the qualities, all the names, all the forms, all the pastimes, all everything about the absolute truth is found within the name of Krishna. Everything. We, we can't understand that through through intellectualization. It can only be understood through realization. I was just explaining this morning. There was one lady I met in Birmingham, we were at a Birmingham Kirtan Mela just two weeks ago actually. It was on the, you know, it was July 9th and July 10th, two days. And uh, this lady, I know her a little bit, she came up to me and she had been chanting 32 rounds a day. Now she said, Maharaja, I'm going to start chanting 64 rounds, give me, give me your blessings. And of course I said, can I say, yeah, sure, <laughs> go for it. And she was explaining that now she has understood that the name is everything. <laughs> She's come to that realization through, through the chanting that there, there's everything's in the name, everything you want and more. It's just perfect, the name is perfect. But as we mentioned tomorrow, this morning in class, we also have to follow the process. We have to associate with devotees and serve devotees. We also, it's required that we hear the lectures on Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita regularly and, try, and only eat Krishna Prashad. It's better to fast than to eat food that is not offered to Krishna because as it says in the Shastras, what is that verse? That uh, the devotees of the Lord uh, actually perform sacrifice because they, they take food offered to the Lord. Those who, who eat food based on sense gratification verily eat only sin. So we get karma, we get bad karma when we eat food that's not offered to the Lord. Eating is a very important part of our whole process. So therefore, taking prasada is one of the three main functions of the devotees, singing, dancing, and taking prasada. So we should always take food that is offered to the Lord. And uh, sometimes we can take food from the outside if it's not cooked, such as salads or Fruit. But do not eat food cooked by non devotees because you get their karma. And when you get their karma, your mind becomes polluted and then you can't chant Hare Krishna properly. So this is the process of Krishna consciousness. It's very really nice. If you study these eight verses, and I would highly recommend you recite these verses prior to your japa every day. Right? Because these verses, as we mentioned, are the embodiment of the holy name in transcendental philosophical teachings. It's a small expression of the knowledge which is in each which is in Krishna's name. It's 
is manifested itself in the form of these eight verses. I mean, he was there. <coughs> okay, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Any questions or comments? Or... Yeah. We got two questions here. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so very much, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances and help you to speak. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, you mentioned. Uh, this name is more merciful than um, Krishna. 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 So that's hard to understand. Is, can, you sh can you share some uh, realizations on this? So, and I'll, uh, my specific question is that we are near the deity. If you offend Krishna, you can't get relief from that offense only by chanting his name. There are four types of offenses offenses to the Lord. Offenses to the holy name, offenses to the Vaishnavas, and offenses to people in general. So, when you, if you commit offenses to the Lord, just like offenses to the Lord can be committed in the temple, and, and just like if we don't properly behave in the temple, or if we, you know, sit improperly, if you sit with your arms around your knees, like that, that is considered to be impressed mentioned in the Shastras. If you, uh, if you chastise people in front of a deity, that's offense. If you speak loudly in front of a deity, that's offense. Um, so there's many offenses in deity worship. Those who are on the altar, who worship the deity directly, and those of us who are in the temple, it's also a form of deity worship. So these, these rules and regulations are mentioned in the devotion. So the only way you can free yourself from the reactions of these offenses is by chanting Hare Krishna. That's all. And if you have chant offenses to the name, then you try to chant without offense and gradually overcome the offenses. The name is very powerful. It can relieve the pain. The only thing the name can't do is relieve fences to the Vaishnavas. Fences to the Vaishnavas are the most serious offense. And the only way one can get free from that is one has to apologize directly to the Vaishnava and uh, present himself as offering service to that Vaishnava. And usually Vaishnavas don't take offense, but if we do offend a devotee, and then even chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra can't help us. <coughs> Only when you approach that devotee and humbly apologize for the transgression and offer to offer, to offer a new service. So, thank you so much. Mataji, Hare Krishna. She's over there. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for a nice Kirtan in class. Um, my question is completely out from the class, like what you gave. I just wanted to hear like some of your pastimes, like with Prabhupada, how you interacted. It would be very nice to hear one of them. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of past, though we might say, association with Prabhupada. About one time when we were in New York with many devotees and Prabhupada was there, we were walking in Central Park in New York. And I was towards the back of the group, and Prabhupada was walking. And if you know Central Park, is a big park and it has roadways going through the park. So the cars were squishing by. And one part, one time, one, at one point, Prabhupada stopped. He, he turned around and looked at us. He said, uh, the man is running on four wheels and the dog is running on four legs. What is the difference? <laughs> <laughs> and then nobody could say anything. And Baba said, there's no difference. <laughs> the business is the same. The dog is running for sense gratification. The man's running for sense gratification. The business is the same. 
So sophisticated running doesn't make you running any better. <laughs> it's where you, why you're running. So people in the material world have sophisticated their sense gratification where the animals do it in a very gross, in a very simple and ordinary way. But it's no different than actually. So I remember that. <laughs> One more question. Yeah. Um, how did I get when you met Prabhupada? How was your first meeting with Prabhupada? How was it with seeing Prabhupada? I didn't get a lot of, what do you say, personal association? No, like when you met him first, like the first meeting. Well, he looked at me. And <laughs> I, got, I got scared. <laughs> Really, I'm serious. Because <laughs> when Prabhupada would look at you, he, he knew, he, 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 he actually, you could understand, and the devotees have also said that he could see you as who you are. His look was not judgmental, but he, he could see you just by looking at you. He knew you. And that's the transcendental vision of a great soul. They can see you and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a nice story. There was one. This, I was in London. I was preaching in London. I went to a, a house I had never been to before. It was the first time I'd been to this house. And so when I had finished my lecture, one elderly gentleman, he was Indian, and he came to me and said, uh, Maharaj, you want to hear a story about me meeting Prabhupada? I said, yeah, sure. He said, I was a student. I was going to college. And then there were some signs that this holy man was giving a lecture to me. So I came to the group lecture, and then I sat in the back, and then I was starting to listen. I was thinking, you know, I'm going to ask him to give, give me blessings in my grades. <laughs> I'm going to ask him to, to bless my, you know, so I get good marks in my, in my classes. So he's listening to Prabhupada, but as he's listening, his whole mind changed. And he, he, he gave up the idea of asking Prabhupada, but he's just listening to the lecture. And so when the lecture is over, he, he's getting up to leave, and then he sees Prabhupada going, <laughs> calling him, he's coming. So he's calling me. And so then he comes up, he's a young man going to college, and he pays his respect to Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, you're a student, yes? And the boy said, yes. You're going to university? Yes. Yes. You have four subjects? Yes. I, I bless you to get good marks on all four subjects. <laughs>
the optics here in one minute. You know, your arms can be attacked. I promise I'll get to that. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so Prabhupada was giving us the vision for the future. He, he said, you know, he said four things. He said, grow your own food, uh, make your own cloth and make clothes from that. He said, learn herbs and then uh, learn medicine from herbs because Krishna has given every type of uh, cure for every disease within nature. Every disease can be cured by nature. We don't need these doctors. I'm sorry to say doctors here. Feeble. <laughs> because nature is there. I was in our new Taliban farm. Maybe many years ago, there was one devotee there, his name is Dwi Buja. And he has created an herbal business where he extracts the different essence from different plants. He turns it into herbs, and he has these herbs for different types of ailments. And he told me that everything is in nature, it's all there. You just have to know the plants and learn the science. And that's where the doctors and the medical people, they, they do the same thing, but then they add their own stuff, and they make the profit. Money, profit should not be for medicine or education. In many culture, that is free. Education was given freely, and medicine, medical care was given freely. So, uh, in our society, it becomes an economic adventure. And if you get sick, you know, sometimes you can't even afford to uh, pay for it. So these things are human rights. And everyone will get sick. So that should not be an economic adventure. To take advantage of people simply by making money from sickness. Like and so the Vedic culture was the Brahmins were the, were the Kavi Rajas. They would travel, they would go to people's homes, they would speak astrology to the family, they would give them advice and medical care, and they would also give them the knowledge of scripture. And based on that, then the people would give them some food, or some clothing, or some something in exchange and therefore the Brahmins didn't work. They simply were giving medicine, education, and uh, knowledge of astrology. So that everything in our society is based on the, the, the money, right? Everything is money, money, money. Therefore Prabhupada said because it's, there's no culture, they all will collapse. So yeah, this is what I learned from Prabhupada. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst a few other things like that. Yes, what do you come back? Oh, I, well, let's get our little friend in the front here first. <laughs> okay, yeah, you've been so patient. Hare Krishna, Dhanda Vastana. Hare Krishna, My question is, why did Narasimha come as a lion? He couldn't come as a Varadi. <laughs> why did he come? Why did he come as a lion instead of coming as a Varadi? He did. He also there's also Varadi Shri that is my incarnation called Varadi Shri. The combination of the two incarnations in one form. You can see it in, in Maya form. There's that one deity, it's in the yoga peat. You see Varadha Shrikadeva there. there. Yeah. So, yeah, he's there in both forms together. Varadha Shrikadeva. Are you the Shrikadeva? Do you like the Shrikadeva more than anybody? Yeah, I love him. I like him. I like him. I like him. I like him. We need you. <laughs> Chant some of the Shri Mantras and kill some demons. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Our future is bright. <laughs> <laughs>
this she was giving the class and saying, uh, she was chanting and her chanting was, that day was really, really, there was not, nothing to it. She couldn't chant properly. So she was thinking, I must have committed an offense. That's why I can't chant properly. So she was thinking like that. And then the next day she got a phone call from one of her friends saying that this other lady was really disturbed by her, by what she did to her, that lady's child. So then she understood, oh, okay, so this lady's angry with me because I have somehow maybe mistreated her child. She's a teacher too, so. And so she apologized, and then she said, after I apologized, then my chanting was good again. So she prayed that I, don't, I may have committed offenses, but I'm not aware of who I did it to or what. So please help me to uh, a sincere prayer. And then there's a place, it's in a place called Kolodweep in the Nine Islands of, of uh, what's it? The Nine Islands of Kolodweep? Uh, Nine Islands, yeah. One is called Kolodweep, and there's an ashram of David under Pundit. If you go there, you can get free from all reactions of Vaishnava Haribo. That's the only place in the world you can do that. Haribo. 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 What were, like, what is that? It's hard for like, a spiritual master to raise the body, right? Like, the struggling and so many things. So you should cry. And then how can we move to the, is there a next level we can move where that attachment, that deepness yeah. and the shelter, like, yeah. how do we move? What are the practical ways? Yeah. What are the uh, One of the reasons why the spiritual master leaves is one is to cut off the insincere disciples and to elevate the sincere ones. So the ones who are very sincere, in fact, they become more serious when the spiritual master leaves. And through that seriousness, they are in contact with the spiritual master through his followings and his instructions. And you see that with many gurus who have left some of their disciples have really excelled amazingly. And then some of those, some other disciples fall away. Even when Prabhupada left, some disciples fell away. Because although they, they had regard for Prabhupada, they weren't fixed in his instructions. Because the instructions are the connection. And so he reasons ill and say that Vaishnavas die when thou are living still in the sound. Vaishnavas died to live and literally spread the holy name around. So a great soul does not die, he simply goes to another place to perform his bhajan, that's all. So he's, so he's still with his disciples and sometimes even more so. But the sincere devotees, they feel the presence of the spiritual master even more. To the insincere devotees, they feel like they're lost. And for those in between, they somehow or other struggle on and gradually make more and more adventure. So missing is all, missing the spiritual master is also a way of connecting? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it says, it says that when the spiritual master leaves, you should cry. That those tears are actually bhakti. It's not that we force ourselves to cry, but if you have a connection with the spiritual master and he leaves, it'll be natural to cry. Hare We answered that question this morning by, by associating with and serving Vaishnavas. We develop a taste for chanting. Serve the devotees 
And as you serve the devotees more and more, your, your, your taste for chanting will increase automatically. Shru Shru Shra Dhanasana Vasudeva Kadaruchi Shemriyatsi Vibhika Purnitir Dhanasana. By serving great souls, great service is done, and by such service one gets an affinity to hear the hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Yeah. So that's the formula. Associate with and serve devotees, and gradually a taste will become. And another way to increase your taste is to chant more and more and more. Just keep chanting. Quantity helps bring about quality. of your preaching will become more and more stronger as you become more purified. So you can do both at the same time. You can only give what you have, but as you increase, then you can give more. Ultimately, uh, we can be able to help others only to the level where we are right. Say again, but only to the level where we are at. And maybe a little more. But if we uh, just to like my carry on no, no, message of Guru Parampara and message of the you repeat the if you repeat perfectly, that is preaching. That, that's preaching. But then there's our preachers who take the knowledge that they're given them and they speak it in their own realizations. And then that's what has power. You can repeat it, and that's also powerful. But when you have, when you realize the knowledge through your own practice, and then you repeat it based on that realization, that has effect because then it becomes personal, very personal. If you know something because somebody told you, it, that's one thing. But if you know something. Because you experience it, that's another thing. Maharaj, uh, you mentioned yesterday and asked you about how do you know uh, if Guru and Krishna are pleased, and you said, Prabhupada said, if you are pleased. Right. And today I was also getting an amazing lecture by Shri Prabhupada, where Prabhupada said that uh, devotional service means you never get tired. Even if you work 24, 25 hours, probably said you never get tired. So, um, I from these two things I gathered that performing devotional service means one should always be blissful, and uh, second is that uh, one should never get tired. So, um, I realize that I'm very far away from the stage. So what is this stage? Is this, is this stage so, Yeah, well, sometimes the body gets tired, but the soul, the soul never gets tired. <laughs> the soul wants to keep going. The soul thinks, oh, it's time to sleep. Oh, no. Here comes six hours of wasted time. 
<laughs> and it's all things like that. And then the, the, the body says, hey, I'm tired. <laughs> Put me down. So we have to take care of the body. With that, we, we don't look forward to sleeping. We do it because it's necessary. That's all. Can you uh, is that platform, the platform of Ruchi that Prabhupada said that one is always blissful and one never feels, I mean, I'm not speaking about the body. Yeah, but these are, yeah, these are obviously higher platforms. Ruchi is a pretty high platform. One is enjoying Krishna consciousness, whatever they're doing, they're feeling happy. And the soul doesn't sleep anyway, the soul doesn't eat, the soul doesn't sleep.
Yeah, he is over in Columbia. Help him out. <laughs> because he's more of a preacher than a manager. And to man and have a project like this, it takes a lot of management. So, some of you who have management skills, um, you can see how you can help to further this yantra more and more. Step forward. Because he, he definitely needs help on the managerial level. On the preaching level, he's fixed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm sure many of you have skills in management. Anybody yeah. wants to get more? No. Hare Krishna. Oh, he's still standing up. Okay, good. The other one really like that. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs>
positive performance before the activity. I will do this. And then you make that statement. So in those affirmations, he gives us ways to focus our attention on the different aspects of the chanting. Like, for instance, I will, I, when I'm chanting, I, I meet Krishna in the form of his holy name. That's one of the affirmations. So you, you remember that Krishna's name is Krishna. And that you're going to meet him through the sound of his name. That's one example. So, when you understand that the, the mantra is an embodiment of the spiritual energy and the topmost, Hare is Radharani, Krishna is Krishna. And Hare and Rama, Rama could be, could be Ramachandra or it could be Radhika Raman, who is also Krishna. So meditate on the sound. Also read the, the explanations by the Acharyas. And there's like there's books out about the Holy Name. Sachinanda Maharaj has written at least three books on the Holy Name. Uh, his last book, what is it called? Uh, the Nectar of the Holy Name is one of them. The other one is I can't remember, but uh, there's a, there's many books and of course in the shastras, it gives you the philosophy, the practice of chanting, where you can start to apply yourself in a very direct way in chanting. Like when I chant, I always chant very slowly my first round, just so I can connect with the sound. And that's my, on that round will take me about 10 to 10, 11 minutes the first round. Then we go very slow just to catch the sound. So you, if you listen to Srila Prabhupada's Japa tape, he also does that. When he starts up a Japa tape, he starts slow. And then as it goes on, he increases the speed. So the speed will increase according to, to the concentration of the but make sure you connect with the sound. Don't go, Hare Krishna, 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 Thank you so much, Bhairav. I have a second part of your question. Like since 
we started with this very beautiful and Sri Sri touched our prayers. Mm. So, how do we, um, and this is connected to chanting, how do we go deeper with uh, realizations of Sri Sri Well, this re reading the explanations given by the Acharyas and recite the verses over and over. Understand the meanings, that's all. Bhakti Vinota Kaur and Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta have given explanations on each of the eight verses. And devotees have spoken classes on that. I spoke many classes on it. Uh, Ravindra Sri Prabhu spoke many classes on that. These classes are really deep. And so, yeah, there's a lot to those prayers. Thank you. Anyone else would like to ask anything? Oh, okay. Yes, Mataji. Thank you, Sri Maharaj. Thank you, Sri Maharaj, you mentioned that we should not take prasada, which is not cooked by devotee and not offered to Krishna. Food, yeah. So, how do we? If we go outside for a couple of days... And eat only fruits and vegetables, or cook for yourself. You eat raw eat uncooked foods if you have to eat outside, or cook, just make arrangements for cooking. Okay. You, you can make some bread one day before you leave, and then uh, make sandwiches. <laughs> So we should very strictly follow that. That's not something that is compromisable. Papa um, said, if you eat food cooked by non-devotees, you pick up their, their, their karma. And then it becomes harder to perform devotional service. It disturbs the mind. So Maharaj, not all the family, what about our extended family or family and the people? Not everybody yeah. is it happens also when devotees are not pure, but, but they are still devotees. You pick up sometimes one of our spiritual masters, he asked his disciple to cook. And then he came to her after he ate her prasad. He said, are you listening to the Beatles? She said, how did you know? <laughs> she was hearing beautiful Beatle music after he ate her prasad. <laughs> I mean, I've had so many experiences with that. Because uh, I eat food from different places, and people's consciousness go into the food. Therefore, we don't take food really, and unless people are chanting 16 rounds and following the four principles. Many of, this, many of the devotees won't touch food unless people are up to that standard of cooking or of practice. Yeah, because you, know, you get you get the consciousness of the cook. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, how do we understand Maya? What is Maya? Maya means what is not. Maya means illusion. Maya means something that is temporary. Maya means what is not. That's the actual definition. Although material energy is real, the presentation of the material energy is false. Maya presents something, this will give you happiness. So when you see it, you maybe you believe it, but then you don't, it doesn't give you what do you expect. What is not. Maya is just a show, that's all. There's no substance to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like flashing lights, but behind it, it's all it is is flashing lights. 
The flashing lights look attractive, but behind it there's no stuff. It's just lights flashing. You might see a flashing light of a pizza. You think, wow, what a nice pizza, but it's just flashing lights. <laughs> <laughs> You see that beautiful girl, and you think, oh, yeah. And that, but then that beautiful girl has a husband. <laughs> so, that's, <laughs> so that's Maya. <laughs> You're thinking I can enjoy, but you won't enjoy because you can't enjoy something that is, you're not allowed to enjoy. We can't enjoy the material energy because it's Krishna's energy. It works under his direction. He controls it and it belongs to him. And if you use the material energy in Krishna service, then it becomes spiritual. But if you use it for your own interest, then that's Maya, that's material. Well, then it will not give you the happiness you're looking for. Maybe temporarily, something will happen. But in the long run, it turns out to be something unpleasant. Yeah. Why is Krishna's energy to divert our attention away from Krishna? That's all. She's a friend. She helps you become Krishna consciousness by. By, uh, by foiling all of your attempts to enjoy. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Okay, it's getting late. What, what time is it? Oh yeah, we we're supposed to stop at nine. So tomorrow's the Kamasi. So tomorrow a little austerity, a little extra chanting, and we'll see you for the Sunday feast. Okay. Chant, dance, and be happy. Haribo! <laughs> Haribo!